Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm Valerie, and we're at my home. So Mark, this is really big and heavy. What is this? This is uh, about 12 and a half pounds of an Orbi Wi-Fi 6 mesh router system. Awesome. It has a router and two satellites. And right. it does weigh a lot. It is, it's really heavy. Ugh. I can't even lift it. I think it's more than 12.5 pounds. Oh, and by the way, uh, just so everyone knows, the reason why we bought this is we picked up a new cable modem. This is the Doxer 3.1 modem from Eris. It's uh, the S33 model, and uh, it's uh, the top of the line uh, unit. So we picked that up, and we wanted to have something that matches to it. So go ahead and let's give it a Well, we wanted to upgrade to Wi-Fi 6 because we feel like it's finally time to do that. Well, that's true because or we have we like have regular it. Wi-Fi. Uh, right. We have an Orbi right now, an older model. I can't remember how many years old it is now, but. Um, the Wi-Fi 6 is so much better than wi the older Wi-Fi. So we figured we'd pick it up and see for ourselves if it's really better. So here we go. So let me open this box up. All right. Well, there you go. Okay. Let's get started. So here's the let's get started instructions. Oh, look. So it has the picture of the up front, but it also in the back it shows you the different routers. So. Very cool. All right. The different routers well, or the different. The different. This is the this is the uh, Orbi router and this is the Orbi satellites. All right. So we'll see them. In, we'll see them live here. All right. So a mesh networking system for your Wi-Fi. What does that mean, Mark? Well, so the really nice thing about a mesh system is you can put these throughout the house and have your Wi-Fi signal everywhere in the house. Ginormous. And then they talk to each other. These are big. Wow, they're a lot bigger than the other ones. So this is this is a satellite. That's that one. This is the router. This is the router. We'll explain each one in a second. Oh. Whoa, I wonder this. Now, oh. could we get these any bigger? No. Nope. There's some I, smaller I asked mesh them, they routers said they out there. They only have this large size. Anything else in there? There might be, but. There's got to be power supplies. Yeah, there's got to be power supplies in here. Well, that's a lot of stuff. And one Ethernet one cable. One Ethernet cable. Ah, this is interesting. What we have is. The router, so this is just like a regular router, okay, and these are the satellites. And so what happens is this router connects up to the internet through the cable modem, and these two talk to the router here using the same SSID, right? So it all looks like one seamless network. And you just spread these around your house and kind of, you know, distances away from the router, right? So kind of place them where you're going to get rid of dead spots. And you're probably going to have to play a little bit where they exactly go, but you'll figure it out pretty quickly. Um, the other thing is, is that these things can be connected either through Wi-Fi themselves, so this talks Wi-Fi to the router, this talks Wi-Fi to the router, or you can actually cable them with the Ethernet cables if you happen to have that in your home. And that's actually the best method. Because remember, this router is Wi-Fi 6, so that's the latest standard. And what happens is it has three radios in it. It has a 2.4 gigahertz. That's the one you usually you hook up your phone or, or slower devices to. It also has a 5 gigahertz radio for in it. Smart that's devices, right? For your smart home devices, right? Yeah, like smart home devices are typically 2.4. And then your phone might be 5 gigahertz or other devices might be 5 gigahertz. It'll also talk to that. But the secret here is that when these talk to the router, it needs a third channel and it's a third 5 gigahertz channel. And the reason why that's important is if you're using the Wi-Fi to connect back here to make the connection to the internet, you don't want any interference from the devices that are in your house. Or put another way, you don't want the device in your house having interference when these two are talking to each other. So that's kind of like the basics of the whole thing. Now, it turns out that this cable modem has a 2.5 gigahertz port on it, or gigabit port. And yeah, I see that here, it's and in yellow. Yes. And when you look at the back of this, you'll see that it has a bunch of ports in the back. As a matter of fact, it's got a yellow one. That's the one you connect up to here. Matter of fact, look at that, it's yellow as well. Yeah, that's So this is 2.5 gigabits per second, or 2.4. Or yeah, 2.5 gigabits per second, and this is 2.5 gigabits per second. Now your current one might be only one gigabit per second. These are just faster because we're getting ready for the higher speed internets. And then it also has in the back four more ethernet ports. So if you, you know how you always get something and it's like, Oh, plug it into your router. Well, you can plug four things into this router. But watch this. In the back of this satellite and the other satellite are four more Ethernet ports. So if you put this somewhere else in your house, and again, you need to plug in a bunch of Ethernet things, 
from your devices, you can put four of them into here, and you can put four of them into here. So that gives you quite a bit of capability of connecting things directly, like for example, your 4K TV. You always right. want to try to get those hooked up directly if you can. But if not, the connection between these is very fast. So the other thing that happens with Wi-Fi 6 is that the speed of which these things run at. So this is supposed to handle, I think, um, up to 5,700 gigabits per second or something like that, or, five, or must be, let me make sure I get the specs here. I don't want to mislead you on the specs. This box is so big. I guess so those are big too. So anyway, it comes with, um, it says here, it has, in the radios, it has a 2.4 gigahertz radio, a 5 gigahertz radio, and another 5 gigahertz radio. Simultaneous tri-band Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's pretty neat, right? Mm -hmm. And then it, it runs at 900 megabits per second. That's what the 2.4 gigahertz channel is. The other channels, the 5 gigahertz channel, they run at 2,400 megabits per second. So that's really okay. fast. So if you're doing things inside the house, it's gonna go really quick between those devices because you really have 2.4 gigabits per second really on those channels. Mm -hmm. And what's really important is when you get a tri-band router, that third channel, if it exists, number one, make sure you get a router, a mesh router with the third channel, the, the tri-band channel for communicating just amongst themselves. And in this case, we picked the one here that has two point, or, you know, well, 2,400 megabits per second back channel. That's the fastest we've been able to find. There are other models of this and other companies that may only have 1,200 megabits per second for the back channel. So the faster the back channel, the better the system's gonna operate. Okay. So they kind of give you an idea. All right, so. Who knew? Is that why they're it. so big? Well, I think they're so big because <laughs> they probably have really big antennas because yeah. Wi-Fi 6 gives you more simultaneous channels that are running at the same time in your house. Now, not all devices like our iPhone, what are these? XS. XS, whatever it is. They don't support Wi-Fi 6, but this fall, if we end up picking up new phones, hope so. hey, it's the hope, um, then those will have a Wi-Fi 6 radio and they'll take better advantage of it. Yeah. But the things you currently have should still get an advantage from it. Uh, but that's it, and so it's just getting ourselves to the latest generation. We want to match the cable modem to the router. And all this really means is that you're gonna have really strong Wi-Fi around your house. Um, this is probably overkill for what we have in our size of house. What is it good well, for? Well, that's us? not exactly correct. So it may be overkill performance-wise, although I never doubt having more performance, but it's really important for the number of devices you can handle. So mm. this is supposed to handle over 100 Wi-Fi devices. Oh. And I can tell you our current we Orbi. We already have more than that. Yes, our we? current Orbi is <laughs> over 100, but sometimes it doesn't seem quite right, does it? No. So this system is designed to handle many more devices simultaneously in the system. And that's one of the reasons for getting this. And as you have 4K TVs in your house, or 8K in the future, I guess you could find them. You now, might already have them. You have them. That's just more bandwidth. And you, the more bandwidth you have, the better. Everything's going to run better. If you're someone that's put a lot of security cameras in your house, they all take quite a bit of bandwidth. So you need to get a faster internet service. You need to get a faster Wi-Fi router, preferably mesh if your house is large enough. And you need to have a top of the line cable modem. Oh, and that's the other thing too, is this spreads it around your house and also can really help improve the performance if you have a, uh, if you have a video doorbell that might be a little far away from your current Wi-Fi router. Having more coverage is going to help that perform better. It, like Mark said, if you have security cameras outside, this is going to give you better coverage, better bandwidth, and to make sure that those stay connected. And if you want to go out in your backyard and hang out and still be looking at your iPad or maybe watching TV, streaming Netflix in your backyard, this is really going to help you have better internet connection as well. Well, so this is the theory. So now the next part is we're going to do the review on this unit and see if all the things we told you really come true. Right. And then another thing that this has is Netgear Armor, which oh, I know is very yes. important to you, Mark. Yes, so it's very important Make to sure you talk about that. Yeah, so basically Netgear Armor is really a firewall or a virus protection uh, program that runs inside the router here to protect you from bad actors out in, the, out in the internet. And we read about that stuff all the time. And so uh, we've had Armor in our system for a long time and you'd be amazed at some of the web pages you go to and you get an alert that says we've blocked the spam attempt. It's a yearly subscription to, uh, to Netgear Armor uh, security. So that's really kind of a nice thing to add to it, and it's all in here in your router. So everything in your house is being protected by armor. 
-hmm. not just your PC. You know, normally you buy virus protection and firewall protection on your PC or your Mac. Uh, but what this does, especially having a smart home with all these devices, which are basically computers, uh, is it provides a level of firewall protection uh, to your whole network, to all the devices on your yeah, network. Especially, you know, you worry about people being able to hack into your cameras or your doorbell or that kind of thing. This gives you an added level of protection on all those devices. An added level, but not a guarantee. Well, so. Of course. But that's anyway, guaranteed. so that's important to us. So this kind of, this fills out our, our requirements. Uh, and uh, so I guess I'll go off and install it. I'll go off and install it and uh, come back and show you how it works. After we install the Netgear Orbi, we will walk through the app and review the performance. First, we need to install the app from the App Store. When you open the app, Orbi will look to see if you already have a system installed. Since this was a new install, the app will fail to find a system and offer to install a new one. Select New System Setup and follow along with the app. The app gives detailed instructions to follow. We recommend following them exactly. We wanted to have a neat installation and picked up the Orbi wall mounting kit. This kit is handy because you can mount the router and satellites on the wall and out of the way. We connected the router to the Aeris Surfport S33 using the 2.5 gigabit per second port. The app dashboard shows you the router status and how many satellites are connected, plus panels for each major function. Device Manager shows how many devices are connected. Security shows the status of Netgear Armor. Internet speed shows the results of the last speed test. Netgear also supports parental controls. This is an optional subscription. You can pull up a network map showing the connections of the router and satellites. Plus, you can see your main Wi-Fi settings as well as the guest network. And finally, a traffic meter showing usage for the month, a very handy feature for those with data caps. Clicking on the picture of the Orbi brings up the network map. You can see here that our internet is up and the satellites connected. The solid line represents a satellite that is wired and dotted when using the Wi-Fi backhaul. Clicking on the router or satellite brings up devices. You can see what devices are connected to the selected router or satellite, their status, name, and connection type. Remember, you can either be connected to the router or satellite via Wi-Fi or one of the four gigabit ports. Selecting details shows you info on the router or satellite, like connection type and firmware. Clicking Device Manager will show you the complete list of connected devices, and clicking on one will show the device details, including which router or satellite you are connected to, the Wi-Fi connection type, like 2.4 GHz or wired, and the link speed negotiated between the router and the device. If you enable Netgear Armor, then clicking Security lets you view all the details, including devices scanned, vulnerabilities detected, and threats blocked, plus recommendations to improve security. Selecting Speed Test lets you test your internet speed from the router itself to the internet, plus you can see a history of your tests. Just remember, your speed at your computer will likely be different. Wi-Fi Settings lets you change the network and security method. And Guest Network does the same, with the addition of enabling or disabling guest access and adding a time period where the guest network is active. Finally, Traffic Meter shows you the data used today, yesterday, this week, this month, and last month. The chart shows this by download and upload, so you can keep an eye on your data cap usage. We conducted some non-scientific performance testing. You can see from the picture where we placed the router and satellites and about how far apart they were. Certainly a healthy distance to provide coverage throughout the house and yard. As a reference, we ran a speed test from my iMac over a wired 1 gigabit per second link to the router, and we pretty much maxed out the limit. We then used an iPhone that supported Wi-Fi 5 and an iPad that supported Wi-Fi 6 and measured the speed at several locations. This included standing by each satellite and in my office on the second floor just above the router. Note, the speeds here are very close to each other, no matter if the satellites are wired to the router or wireless, which shows the value of the fast 5 GHz back channel. In all three cases, you can see the large gain of performance from using Wi-Fi 6. Wandering away from the satellite shows a lower rate of performance the farther away you go.
which was expected and still very good. At the patio, around 25 feet from the breakfast room satellite, we still have a healthy rate. Of note, both the Wi-Fi 5 and 6 rates ended up basically the same on the patio. Sitting on the couch in the living room was a big surprise. Wi-Fi 5 performance was similar to the patio speeds. However, we gained over 80% in performance with Wi-Fi 6. Unlike the patio, which has the stucco wall of the house to deal with, there are no external walls impacting the signal. Using the iPhone and iPad are one thing, but what about IoT devices? Especially the cameras. As you can see, we have many cameras, a video doorbell, and the Guardian leak prevention valve all outside the house to support. Using the device manager, we were able to determine the link speed each obtained which satellite they connected to, and which band, 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. In all cases, they connected to the nearest router or satellite. This was really important since having a reliable, fast connection to these devices is key. Overall, we are pleased with this new Netgear Orbi RBK853 mesh router, coupled with the Aeris Surfboard S33 cable modem, and expect this will keep us running fast for the next few years. Thanks for watching our video today. We've included more information about the product, including the links where to buy in the description box below. And while you're there, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you can find out the next time we do a new video. And for more smart home stories, visit appmyhome.com. Thank you. Thank you.